Hi students, Cassidy here. Uh, you'll notice that this uh, vocabulary that we're going to be doing for Persepolis looks a little different than the vocabulary we did for Things Fall Apart. So as we go through this, please make sure you're watching and listening while you're taking notes. Otherwise, um, you might miss something, which would cause you to lose points. So our first word is fundamentalism. And the first thing I'd like you to do, below the word fundamentalism, you're going to see numbers 1, 2, 3, and 4. I'd like you to rate your word knowledge. You're going to see at the top of the paper, in the top margin, it tells you what the 1, 2, 3, and 4 stand for. 1 means you've never heard this word before today. You did not know it existed. 2, you knew it existed, but you couldn't have defined it if somebody asked you. 3, you know the word and you know the definition. And 4, you what we call own the word. It's part of your personal lexicon that when the opportunity arises to use this word, you do, rather than using a um, less sophisticated synonym. Okay? So please rate your word knowledge for fundamentalism. Fundamentalism is a noun and it's a religious movement characterized by a strict belief in the very literal interpretation of religious texts. Um, this word comes from our intro to the novel. It says, this old and great civilization has been discussed mostly in connection with fundamentalism. My example sentence is the fundamentalism behind the decision seemed out of touch with reality. She couldn't believe someone could actually be born again into a wealthy family just because they had killed an enemy. Will you please write your own sentence for fundamentalism? Here are some images for fundamentalism. Getting back to the fundamentals, the very literal interpretation, fundamentalism. As always, pause this video if I'm going too fast for you. Our second word is fanaticism. Please rate your word knowledge for fanaticism. It's a noun. It means motivated or characterized by an extreme, uncritical enthusiasm or zeal usually in religion or politics. This also comes from the intro to our novel. This old and great civilization has been discussed mostly in connection with fanaticism. He thought that there was way too much chaos behind the fanaticism of the young girl's obsession with the boy band. Fanaticism. So somebody is a fanatic, they are practicing fanaticism. So please write your own sentence for fanaticism. Here are some images, maybe to help you understand um, fanatics and fanaticism. Number three, our word here is terrorism. Please rate your word knowledge for terrorism. I'd like to point out that our first three words end with the suffix ism. The suffix of ism makes something a noun. All three of these words are nouns. So uh, fundamentalism, fanaticism, terrorism, they are something that is done, a noun, a thing. So terrorism, a noun, the use of violence and threats to intimidate or coerce, to try to persuade somebody to do something by um, saying you're going to inflict terror. This also comes from our intro. This old and great civilization has been discussed mostly in connection with terrorism. My example sentence, the attack most people in the U.S. are aware of related to terrorism is the attack on the Twin Towers on September 11th, 2001. Please create your own sentence for the word terrorism. Terrorism. The fourth word is repress, and this is a verb. It means to keep under control, check, or suppress, a quell. You might, if you've read The Hunger Games, you might be familiar with the term the quarter quell. This is when the capital had um, <clears throat> put people back in the games to try to quell or repress any kind of bubbling up from the society, from the different districts. This also comes from our intro of our novel. I don't want those Iranians who suffered under various repressive regimes to be forgotten. So people who were kept under control, who were suppressed, who were repressed. My example sentence. The president's repressive nature kept those who disagreed with him quiet, or else they would end up in prison, or worse, repress. So being kept away from your freedoms, to hold back freedoms, repress. We also talk about this as people repressing memories, not wanting to remember something um, from their past that was painful. Repress. <clears throat> This is a little different than our next word, 
oppressed. So the previous word was repress. This word is oppress. Oppress is an adjective. Um, oppressed, excuse me, excuse me. Oppressed. To be oppressed is an adjective. It means unjustly inflicting hardship and constraint, especially on a minority or other subordinate groups. So if you are oppressed, you are feeling this hardship and constraint. Um, the sentence that relates to our novel is the local Iranians were oppressed by the fanatics after the Islamic Revolution. My example sentence, my culture was oppressed for our beliefs, beliefs, but everyone's freedom of speech was repressed. So oppress is to feel hardship, be have pain inflicted on you. Repress is just to separate from freedoms. Okay, so oppress versus repress. Oppressed is like going to jail, um, feeling some kind of unfairness based on who you are. Repress is simply to keep people quiet, but oppress is hardship. So similar, but uh, have some key differences. Write your own sentence for oppress, please. Next word is regime, and this is a noun. It's a government, a system, or a planned way of doing things, especially one imposed from above. So one, a regime is something that is forced upon someone else, like a government that's forced upon the citizens. This also comes from our introduction. I don't want those Iranians who suffered under various repressive regimes to be forgotten. So the current regime may have appeared to be an improvement over the previous one, but the citizens didn't realize how repressive they would be. So we can have repressive regimes, regimes that keep their citizens quiet, just like in the Hunger Games. It's a repressive regime. <clears throat> Here are some examples of regimes. North Korea, Hitler, the American regime. We look at freedom, kind of... Um, being forced upon us. We all must have our freedoms. Regime. Next word is obligatory. This is an adjective and it means required. Either required by legal means, moral means, or some other rule. Compulsory. Um, we talk, we use the term compulsory because before you turn 16 you have a compulsory education. You are required to go to school. Obligatory. Required. This comes from page 3. Then came 1980, the year it became obligatory to wear the veil at school. My example sentence, the coach said attendance at school was obligatory in order to travel. So obligatory, meaning required. Safety glasses are obligatory in this area. Obligatory, compulsory, necessary, required, obligatory. Our next word is capitalism, and this is an adjective. This is an economic system in which investment in and ownership of the means of production, distribution, and exchange of wealth is made and maintained chiefly by private individuals or corporations. So an economic system run by private um, ownership. Page 4 is where this word comes from. They are symbols of capitalism. My example sentence, the United States allows people to privately own businesses and make their own money. Therefore, our society, our economy, runs on capitalism. We all have our own money and our own belongings. So the United States is a capitalistic country. Capitalism. Capitalism. People have private property. Everybody has their own personal money, their own wealth. Capitalism. Our next word is decadence, and this is a noun. Overly luxurious, but it can also mean lacking moral discipline or simply excessive, having too much of something. Overly luxurious, decadence. This comes from page 5. They are symbols of decadence. When we pair this with the ex um, sentence previously, they're symbols of capitalism. The speaker in our novel was making the connection between capitalism and decadence. So they believe that because we have private money and we can have great wealth compared to our neighbor, that maybe the U.S., because we're capitalists, have too much decadence in our society. That's what the speaker's saying. In our example sentence, the decadence of the castle was amazing. I heard there was even a golden toilet seat. There's that golden toilet seat. Decadence. 
Dessert can be decadent if it tastes very rich. Decadence. <clears throat> Our final word is prophet, and this is a noun. A person regarded as an inspired teacher or proclaimer of the will of God. This comes from page 8. What do you want to be when you grow up? I'll be a prophet. In this example sentence, some cult leaders have found followers by declaring themselves prophets of God. Prophet. A person regarded as an inspired teacher or proclaimer of the will of God. Prophet. Some examples of historical prophets. Or maybe you're familiar with this film. Prophet. Thank you. This concludes our first set of vocabulary for Persepolis.